So the next thing I want to talk about is how to know when to actually change out your brake rotors. All right, so as I barely push the brake lever, you see it's kind of going up as you can see how much clearer it is now than it was when we first started. So What's going on YouTube? I'm welcome back to the channel. Well in today's video we're actually going to be working on the Africa Twin behind me and what we're going to be doing is to change out the front brake pads and brake rotors. It's one of those that I kind of already recorded a lot of this video. Uh, it's one of those that I got to the point of actually fixing to put the pads on the bike and found out that I had ordered the wrong brake pads after waiting a month to get the original ones in. So now that I've got the new brake pads that are correct in, we're going to continue on, but I want to kind of go ahead and show you the brake rotors and brake pads on the part numbers that you will need in order to do this. And then we're going to go over how to know when to actually change your brake rotors and brake pads out. And then we're going to go into how to actually do it on your Africa Twin. So here are the brake rotors and brake pads for the front that I ordered, and they are actually the Brembo brand. Um, here is what the actual pad looks like that you're going to need, at least for a 93 model. Um, I'm not sure if other models look different, but this is the one that I needed. And here is the part number that I used. And then on your rotor for the front, I'm going to use this part number right here. And this is what it looks like. And as you can see right here, it looks very similar to what I'm going to assume is going to be factory, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So kind of like a regular vehicle in your car or truck that you usually change out your brake rotors and brake pads, both in a pair on the front or the rear. And that's going to be the same situation here on your motorcycle. On your front wheel on your Africa Twin, you actually have a brake rotor and brake pad on the left and right side. So. In order to be able to stop evenly and you're not being pulled to one side or the other, make sure that you change out your brake rotors and brake pads, both of them at the same time, otherwise you may have some issues. In addition to changing out the brake rotors and brake pads, I'm actually going to be changing out the brake fluid. And as y'all know, I like Lucas Oil products, so I'm actually going to be using Lucas Oil's DOT4 fully synthetic brake fluid, which has a very high boiling point. Uh, it's one of those I figure riding off road, I may be riding the brakes a good bit and I don't really want to be, you know, going down a hill and all of a sudden lose brakes because I started boiling out the brake fluid. So the next thing I want to talk about is how to know when to actually change out your brake rotors. It's one of those that right here, as you can see, there's actually a minimum thickness that you can have on your rotor. And in order to check that, you're actually going to be using one of these, which is a caliper, or this one in particular is actually a digital caliper, and it's a long reach caliper. And the reason why you want to use a long reach caliper instead of a regular caliper like this is because you're actually wanting to actually measure the inside portion right here, which is where your brake pad is actually rubbing. If you use a regular caliper, you're actually going to be measuring this outside edge and this outside edge is actually going to be just a tad thicker than the inside because your pad doesn't go all the way to the edge. So make sure you're actually using a long reach caliper when you're checking your minimum thickness. Another reason why you may need to change out your brake rotors is that if it looks like this, which is very wavy, you're actually going to wear out new brake pads very, very quickly. And in order to prolong the life of your brake pad, Make sure that you know your brake rotor isn't wavy like this so that you get the maximum life out of your brake pads. So the final reason why you may need to change out your brake rotor is that if you're looking at your brake rotor and inspecting it and you start seeing little lines that are going across it or you actually start seeing where the bolt is actually tight but the rotor is loose, that means that your brake rotor is starting to crack or has cracked already. And it's very possible that if you're on your brakes with it like that, it's very possible that it can shatter and you definitely don't want that. So make sure that you're looking for those type of signs on your brake rotors. 
onto your brake pads, unlike a regular car or truck that has wear indicators, these brake pads don't have that. So you're going to actually need to actually look at your brake pads and make sure that the thickness of them are still, you know, a pretty decent amount of brake pad. Otherwise, if it gets real thin and you start getting metal to metal, you're going to actually ruin your brand new brake rotors that you just put on. So go ahead and make sure that you're checking both your brake pads and brake rotors for these issues. All right, now that you've got all that information as far as, you know, what brake rotor and brake pads you need to order and kind of when to change out your brake rotors and brake pads, let's get started on changing out the actual pads and rotors on this Africa Twin. All right, so depending on how your front fender and you know your covers right here are set up, whether you have them on there or not, kind of depends on how you start off. Um, it's one of those that you don't necessarily have to take the front fender off, but it'll make it a little easier to get in the tire out of the, you know, out from underneath the fender. So it's one of those in order, if you have this kind of setup on your front fenders and your side, you're going to need to take these two JIS Phillips off. One 10 millimeter right here on the front side and one 10 millimeter here on the back side and that's on both sides in order to get that off. Move your speedometer cable away from, you know, out of the clamp right here. So before I show you how to take this side cover off, um, I wanted to kind of explain to you one thing about these two bolts. Uh, if you'll look at the collars, there's the difference in the collar that's on the rear, which is this one right here, and the one that's on the front. Uh, I wanted to kind of explain that to y'all just in case y'all was unaware, because the first few times that I did this, I kind of didn't realize that. So, just kind of sharing the knowledge. All right, so in order to take your cover right here off your front fender, you just kind of pull it at an angle and it pulls right off. So this side over here is just the same as the other side, except you don't have to worry about your spin over cable. So the easiest way I found to get the fender off a little easier than trying to get both the fender and the under bracket off of it is to pull the front fender off of the bracket that I was talking about and just kind of turn it sideways and then it pulls right out. And then this one right here, just like so. Now that we've exposed our brake caliper, let's go ahead and get that off. Um, the first thing you want to do to get that off is you're going to want to take your brake hose clamp right here off. That way it'll give us a place to, after we get this off, we can kind of tie it to the frame right here. So this is going to be right here is an eight millimeter. And then these two right here that, that holds your bracket on is going to be a 12 millimeter. All right, once you have those two loose, you can actually pull it off, but if it's giving you a little problem, just use a little flathead screwdriver, and then reach in here and just kind of work it out from top to bottom. Just like so. Once you have it loose, find either a zip tie, or I've got these uh, Velcro type straps, and I'm just gonna loop it in to the mount just like so, and then I'm gonna tie it to the crash bar right here. That way it's just not dangling around, you know, and possibly breaking your uh, brake hose. All right, and just like on the other side, let's do the same thing on this side. So now that we've got the two brake calipers off, we, the next thing we need to do is we need to take our speedometer cable loose, and to do that, you're going to want to take your hose clamp right here loose and then also your uh, actual speedometer cable loose right here. Both of them are these JIS Phillips.
and then to get the speedometer cable out of the housing, you just pull it straight up. Just like so. So we'll route that kind of over here out of the way and just kind of let it hang loose. The next thing you want to do is you're going to want to loosen the four nuts that's holding your axle clamp right here on. You don't necessarily have to take these all the way off. You just have to loosen them up. And they're a 10 millimeter. Now that the clamp is loose, get something that you can use to put underneath your actual forks on both sides. That way, when you get your axle loose, you're going to be able to have something that sets on after you get the tire off. So this nut right here is actually a 17 millimeter. And you see I've kind of got a three quarter inch drive because you torque this up pretty good. Alright, so as you saw, the speedometer housing kind of fell out after I took the axle loose and took, pulled the tire off. Um, all you kind of do is just kind of let put it back in there and just kind of line it up. And then, you know, so it's not that hard to see how it goes together. So as you can see, I've got the tire sitting in a bucket because the rotor is actually small enough to fit inside a 5-gallon bucket. So it's one of those that these are actually 6 millimeter Allen bolts. And I'm hoping that I'm not going to have to heat them up. Uh, as you can see, I've got kind of a long 3 8 inch drive. And I'm going to sit here and try to take it loose without having to heat them up. Alright, so these come loose a lot easier than the ones on my Harley came loose. Um, on my Harley, I actually had to heat up the actual bolts because of how they were in there. So what we're going to do is, we're going to actually mount it to the wheel, lining it up with the existing mounting holes. And as you saw, I was able to take the bolts off without having to use an impact or any kind of heat or special tools. So in order to mount these again, I'm going to actually be using blue Loctite. Um, it is medium strength and does not require any special tools like I was just talking about in order to take it off, just regular hand tools. So that's the reason why I'm going to use blue Loctite or medium grade Loctite. And I like the new design that they've come out with that's kind of a gel type and it's real nice and easy to use from Permatex. Now that we got them all started by hand, let's kind of tighten them up a little bit, you know, till they're kind of snug with just a regular ratchet. Now that we have those all snug together, we're going to actually torque them down to about 31 foot pounds or 42 newton meters. All right, and with that, we got one side done. So let's flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. All right, now that we have our disc on both sides, we can actually put it back on the motorcycle. So for one thing I like to do is I like to kind of put a little bit of axle grease inside the bearings right here kind of as much as i can you know i know that a lot of it's going to actually be coming out but it kind of helps make sure that some of it gets in there and you know helps lubricate it so one thing i failed to mention when i was taking the wheel off until it fell off is you actually have a wheel spacer that goes into your wheel hub right here on your left hand side it goes in with this side into the actual wheel hub with this sitting next to your actual fork tube. So don't forget to put this back in there or else you won't have it aligned correctly. 
Now we're ready to put our speedometer housing on there. And what you're going to want to do is when you put it in there, you're going to want to kind of make sure that this right here is at the same angle as your fork tube right here is. All right, so now that we've got our housing on there, our spacer on the other side, we're ready to kind of lube up our actual axle. All right, so that's good enough for right now. And then I'm going to kind of put it, just sit kind of like right there. That way I can kind of push back on the motorcycle, remove my two things holding the forks down, and then kind of slide the tire in there and easier to get the axle into the spin armor housing and all the way through to the other side. All right, now that we have it started over here on the other side, let's start tightening it up. Now that we have our axle actually kind of snug, we're gonna actually torque it down to 47 foot-pounds or 64 newton meters. So it goes without saying that any time you change out your rotors, you're going to make sure that you put in fresh brand new brake pads, otherwise you may wear your pattern of your brake pads into your new rotors. And kind of vice versa, if you put in new brake pads and your rotors are real bad grooved, you actually wear your pattern of your brake rotor into your new pads. So unless you have you know, some pretty smooth rotors, it's a good idea to go ahead and change both your brake pads and brake rotors out both at the same time. So now that I've got all the brake rotors changed out, let's change out our brake pads. The first thing you're going to want to do on your brake caliper is you got a little flathead screw right here that is holding a Allen bolt inside of it. So let's take this little flathead set screw out of it. All right, so on the inside of your, where the set screw was, your Allen bolt right here is actually a five millimeter Allen. All right, then you can spin it around and on the back side, as you see, your brake pads come right out. So now that you remove the brake pads off of your brake caliper, the next thing you're gonna to need to do is actually push your brake pistons into the caliper a little bit. But before you do that, make sure you remove your cap so that you're not putting any, any extra force against your brake pistons because the cap is holding you know, the brake fluid in there. It allows some of the brake fluid maybe to come over or you can use a paper towel or something to get a little brake fluid out of here if it's getting to the very top. And this right here, your cap, is going to be a Phillips or a JIS Phillips. Alright, so in order to push your pistons back in the caliper a little bit, what I'm using is a crescent wrench or a adjustable wrench, but you can also use a brake, one of your brake pads, and actually use a C-clamp uh, C to actually push both of them in. I find it easier with this one to actually just use a crescent wrench. Now that I have the brake pistons pushed back in, Let's take it loose, and I'm actually going to use some brake cleaner to actually clean it up a little bit before I put the new pads in here. All 
All right, so a couple of things that I was going to show y'all that I kind of come across whenever I was cleaning this is if you want to actually take the caliper off of your actual mount, you just simply pull it off kind of like you do right there. And I've already greased these two, you know, pins, dowel pins, so that it's got fresh grease on there. Now, on your actual mount, you actually have, and some people say that they've lost these, that doesn't really affect anything, but if you still have it, well, make sure you put it back on there, is this little bracket right here that just kind of sits in to help. It's kind of an anti-rattle bracket, I think is what they call it. And so make sure you've got that back in, like it is right there. And then on your actual caliper, you have another anti-rattle bracket right here on the end. Now, the way it goes, you'll see right there where it's kind of kind of lip down and on this side, a lip up. Well, your lip down goes on the outside of your caliper and it just pushes in just like that. So let's reassemble our caliper and to our mount and all you do is just like I said you realign those two and then just push it in. All right now that we got the correct brake pads let's actually put them into the caliper. The way they actually go into the caliper is that you want to make sure that your hole right here is back here in the back where your guide pin goes through. Also on the front side is actually sits right next here in the front there's actually a groove that it goes into so it kind of goes just like this where it fits in that groove and then your other one make sure that you have it turned you know toward each other like so so that you have a space right there where the brake rotor is going to go through now that we have the brake pads in there on your guide pin, you're going to want to add a little bit of grease. That way it helps the brake pads slide along this very smoothly. Once you've applied a little bit of grease, it's time to insert the guide pin into the actual brake caliper. And you're actually wanting to make sure that you're inserting it where it screws into. After you've started inserting it, you're going to want to line it up with your actual first brake pad. And you may have to put a little downward pressure on there if you still have your anti-rattle pads. After you've got it into the first one, just keep sliding in and it should align it with the second brake pad and then start screwing it in to the actual caliper. After you've screwed it in a couple of turns by hand, use a five millimeter Allen wrench to screw it all the way in the rest of the way and secure it tightly as the manual does not have a torque spec. After you've got the guide pin back in, it's time to put the guide pin set screw on there. That way it helps keep the guide pin from coming back out. And the set screw is actually going to be a flathead screw. All right, now that we have everything mounted back to our brake caliper mount, we can actually put it here on the brake rotor, but you may need to actually spread your brake pads back out in order for it to fit. Once you have it on your rotor, you just need to move it back into place so that it lines up with your two mounting holes right here on your forks. All right, now that we got our two bolts started, we can actually tighten it up with a 12 millimeter socket and there's no torque spec that I could find, so just tighten it up pretty snug. All right, now that we have that all put back together, we can actually put our brake hose clamp back on. And the way this brake hose clamp goes together is you got a little ear right here that goes into that notch right there. So you just kind of line them up and then put it, wrap it around your actual brake hose and then mount it to the forks, just like this.
and this is going to be an eight millimeter bolt. All right, now that we got this side done, it's going to be the same process for the other side. All right, now that we have the other side done, what we need to do is I'm going to put just a little bit of grease right here on the speedometer little ear that's sticking up that is connected to our gear in our speedometer housing. Now that we've got a little grease in there, we're going to kind of make sure that we're lining up our little ear at the end of our speedometer housing with that little notch so that everything lines up and it goes in smooth. After you have it into the speedometer housing, you may have to rotate the speedometer cable in a little bit in order for it to line up for our screw to go in to mount it to the speedometer housing. And then screw it down with a JAS Phillips. All right, now that we have our speedometer mounted, we can actually use our hose clamp to mount the speedometer cable next to our fork tube to keep it out of the wheel. And as you can see, my hose clamp already kind of has it molded into the metal so that whenever I screw it down to our mount back here, is flush and looks like it was before. All right, now that we have the brake pads and brake rotors all tightened up, and before we can tighten our clamp that's holding our axle on, we really need to go ahead and bleed our brakes and get all the old brake fluid out. So what I'm gonna use is a piece of hose and I'm gonna connect it to your brake caliper right here and as I'm pumping the front brakes, I'm actually going to be keeping an eye on the brake master cylinder reservoir and making sure that I never let that go dry or else I'm going to have to really do a lot of work as far as bleeding the brakes a lot more. Hopefully by making sure that it never goes dry, I won't have that issue. So the first thing we're going to do is connect our hose up to our brake caliper. So now that we've got our hose hooked up to our bleeder valve, we're actually going to use an 8 millimeter wrench to loosen that valve up. Alright, so as I barely push the brake lever, you see it's kind of going up and then it's collecting down there in the bottom. And so you can see it's not almost out. And so here in the next couple of pumps, I'm actually going to fill it back up. All right, so I've been pumping the brake, and as you can see, I've got it almost down empty. So I know I'm going to have mostly new brake fluid now that I put it in there. All right, now that I know that I've ran brake fluid at least one and a half times through the master cylinder, I'm actually going to fill it up again and maybe you'll be able to actually see how clear the brake fluid is. As you can see how much clearer it is now than it was when we first started. So now I'm going to tighten this one back up. So on this side we're not going to have to flush out quite as much brake fluid because we've already flushed out the line that goes from the master cylinder down to the actual T that branches it out to both brake calipers. So let's start back on this side and flush the rest of it out. But you're going to want to make sure while you're doing it that you're still keeping an eye on your master cylinder because like I said before, you're not wanting that to ever go dry or you'll induce air into your system and have to really do a good job bleeding out your brakes. All right, so now it's pretty clean, so we'll tighten this one back up. And now we'll fill the master cylinder all the way up. All right, so let's put our cap back on and make sure you remember to put your rubber gasket that goes in there first and then your plastic cover followed by your metal top cover. 
And then let's put our two JIS Phillips in there and tighten them down. And then use a rag to wipe away any excess that may have come out after we filled it up. All right, use some brake cleaner. Make sure you clean your disc and your brake caliper real well to get any oil that you may have put on there from your fingers or any kind of oil that they may have been on there from the factory. And make sure you rotate your wheel so that you're getting the part of the rotor that's behind here. All right, let's do the other side. Now that we got all the front brakes back together, what the manual says is to pump your front brakes a few times to kind of set the brakes. So now that I've done that, I'm going to bring it off the center stand. And then I, I'm going to hold the brakes and I'm actually going to kind of push down on it so that I'm actually setting everything up front as far as the axle and everything else is concerned. And once I do that, then I'll start looking at tightening the axle clamp up here on the front. Now that we've kind of set everything like the manual was talking about, we can actually tighten our axle clamp up. Now, if you completely removed your axle clamp, there's actually an arrow that points the direction that it needs to be mounted. So make sure that you're taking a look at that. After you got that back on there, it says to tighten the top two first and then the bottom two. These are all torqued to 12 newton meters or approximately 108 inch pounds. Well, as you saw, that's all it is to change out your front brake pads, your front rotor, and flushing out your front brake fluid. You know, as you saw, it wasn't very hard. And I really think I'm going to like these Brembo brake pads and everything because you know, Brembo is known for their racing and their high performance stuff, and I'm pretty sure that they don't slack as far as their normal, everyday, you know, driving and motorcycle stuff. So I really think I'm going to enjoy them. Um, if y'all thought this video was very helpful as far as a how to, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. And, you know, leave me a comment. Let me know if you saw some things that I could have done better. Or if you thought, like I said, this was a very good, helpful how-to because, you know, your comments really help me go sometimes as far as keep doing this because, you know, there are times where it's like, why am I still doing this? And then I get some comments that really motivate me to keep doing it. So I really appreciate y'all that leave those comments. And, you know, share with some of your friends, especially some people that need to be doing their own brake pads and rotors and everything. And have, you know, the tools to do it, but just a little afraid to do it. You know, I think uh, the how-to is pretty good that I did. So until the next video, always take the center route, and I'll see y'all then.